My name is Gabriel Carrier from the Center for Data Science and Artificial Intelligence. So at the Center for Data Science and Artificial Intelligence, we use data and uh, machine learning to provide solutions to various problems we have in the society. The areas we deal with are ecosystems monitoring, health and agriculture. So under uh, ecosystem monitoring, the, what we do is we develop sensors to collect data in our ecosystems and then we use machine learning to make inferences about, uh, from, uh, from the data we have collected about the status of our ecosystems. One approach that we use is acoustic monitoring of ecosystems. The idea is to use uh, sounds to assess the, the trends in the ecosystems. So we have been using uh, bird audio monitoring birds audio monitoring and uh, birds audio monitoring. So we have developed an acoustic sensor that's based on the Raspberry Pi that we have deployed at the University's Conservancy for bird audio data collection. So from that data we can uh, do automatic classification of bird species and then we can uh, determine uh, the trends in the ecosystems. The other approach that we use is using wildlife image data. So we have developed a camera trap. So we have two, two types of camera traps, one that's based on the OpenMV and another one that's based on, uh, on the Raspberry Pi. So we, de we deploy this, the camera traps in, in the university's conservancy and then uh, the, 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 the camera traps called collect uh, wildlife image data. Here is sample data that we have collected uh, from the conservancy. We have an impala, a bushbuck, and uh, a zebra. So then we use machine learning to do object detection of the individual animals in a frame. And then from there we proceed to classification of uh, the individual species. So from uh, that analysis we can tell about the biodiversity of the, of the conservancy and also monitor the trends in, in them. So the other approach we do is water level monitoring to monitor uh, the, the water catchments. So we use, uh, we have developed a river water level monitoring system that collects uh, data of the water, the level of water in a river. And then using rainfall data and uh, we, we get from uh, Tamo at Tamo, then we can uh, uh, really, uh, we can analyze and tell about the status of the, those water catchments. Uh, so the other thing that we are doing is uh, monitoring forestry. So we have developed a stereoscopic camera that uh, is able to obtain biophysical parameters from trees. So it employs the same uh, principle of stereoscopic vision in animals or human beings. So you, uh, we are able to estimate the distance to an object and also estimate its size. And that's the same principle that's employed by this uh, cam system that has two cameras. So what you do is just capture an image of a tree and then you can be able to tell its height and the crown diameter and the diameter of the track at the bre breast height. So this system can be used for monitoring the progress of trees and, uh, and also for carbon stock uh, credit computation. So we have also developed a system for monitoring electric fences used in uh, protected areas such as conservancies, national parks and all that. So uh, traditionally the rangers are required to periodically monitor the fence to measure the voltage of the fence and if the voltage falls are given below a given value, the fence is said to be faulty. So to locate the fault, the rangers have to walk along the fence looking for that fault. Since the fences are exceptionally long, uh, it's a laborious and uh, time-consuming process. So with this system, you just deploy it at the beginning of the fence, and then it uses the principle of time domain reflectometry to, to monitor that fence. It can detect a fault, predict the distance to the fault, and also tell you the kind of fault, hence making the process of monitoring electric fences easier. So another area that we work in is uh, health. So under health, we have developed an orthopedic uh, system for monitoring patients with the knee issues. So we are one system uses a knee brace where you put on the brace and then we can uh, assess how you are flexing your, your leg. So that, that's where we can monitor the progress of, your, of the patient. So the other approach that we're using is computer vision. So whereby you start in front of a webcam and then uh, using machine learning, we are able to 
tell how well you can flex your joints, arms, and, and also knees. So this system will enable orthopedic patients, uh, all, we, we enable doctors to monitor orthopedic patients uh, easily without even having, uh, having requiring them to go to the hospital physically. So we're also doing rheumatic heart disease monitoring using machine learning. So uh, using machine learning will enable doctors to do timely diagnosis of the disease to enable a timely uh, a med a med or medication of the patients to enable them to heal. So the other area that we're working is agriculture. So one thing that we are doing is we are doing coffee yield prediction using uh, historical yield, historical data, climate data, and uh, satellite data. So uh, we have been doing some analysis with the university's coffee farm. We are trying to help the farm, the farm manager, to predict the coffee yield uh, in order to to assess the the status of their farm and also to do some preparation if needed. So we have also developed a black soldier fly system for monitoring the development of the black soldier flies. So these are uh, some insects that are used to develop animal feed. So this system is able to monitor the humidity and the temperature of the incubators and then uh, so to, for optimum development of those uh, insects. So it's able to alert the farmer about uh, the status of the incubator so that they can uh, get a real-time st status of the incubator. Uh, thank you. That's